Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to customize the buttons on your Squarespace website. In this video, we're going to talk about the different types of buttons in Squarespace so you understand exactly how to customize the button you're trying to customize. Then we'll talk about some of the unique styles that you have available using the design settings in Squarespace, and then my favorite part, how to customize it with code. I'll teach you about how to create unique button shapes and styles and how to add hover effects. We've got all kinds of fun stuff to cover. Now, in the description below, I've included some timestamps in case you want to jump ahead to something specific, but without further ado, I'll go ahead and share my screen with you and we can get started. Here we are inside Squarespace, and I have a lot of different buttons here on this particular page of my website. I want you to pay attention to what happens when I hop into edit mode. Do you see that here I have button blocks, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Now these button blocks are the exact same styles, but they look so much bigger than these on the left. That has to do with the design setting of the button block. If I click on this button block and choose this option right here to open up my design menu, you'll see I have this set to fill. When I change it to fit, it's going to match this button on the left and I can adjust the alignment. When I select, when I select fill, it's going to take up the entire space of this content block. Now here inside Squarespace, I can stretch this out to be really big, even overlapping other content, and this whole thing is still a button. That again is found under the design setting where I have it set to fill. Now my secondary button has a curve to it, but watch what happens when I make it larger. That curve is going to change in proportion with the size of the content block because again, under the design option, I've selected fill. All of these are the button content blocks. To add this to any spot on your Squarespace website, select the add block option and choose button. Here you'll see it's automatically set to be primary. And if we click on this option, we'll see that under the design tab, it's set to fill. Now at any time, I can change this to a secondary button or a tertiary button. And again, we can change it from fill to fit, whatever style you'd like to go with. The style of these buttons are all controlled using our site style menu. I'm gonna delete this extra one and let's talk about how we can customize these button styles. Over here on the right hand side of the screen, I'm going to click on the paintbrush icon to open my site styles menu and then we'll see the buttons option. If I hover over this, we'll see a little animated preview of my buttons, which is pretty cool, but clicking this arrow is what opens my button menu. Now instantly we'll see all three of our options, primary, secondary, and tertiary, and we also see a button pack option at the very top. Here you'll see a list of pre-made button packs created by Squarespace designers. There are some pretty cool options here, so if you're looking for some inspiration, definitely click on this option to check out what some of these styles are. Let's go ahead and click on this one, which is going to round our primary button, which is a design style we don't currently have. You can see them change. And then let's click on this option to see what that looks like. We've got a lot of different options here. Pretty cool how it instantly changes everything. Let's go back to this one, and I'm gonna navigate back to my main buttons option here because I wanna show you something so important that a lot of Squarespacers don't know. If I click on the primary button style, what I wanna show you is that this primary button style changes so much more than these two button blocks. I have a button enabled in my website header. And if we scroll down here, you'll see I have a list section or a people section that has buttons for each one of these items. And I also have a form and I have a product block here on this page of my Squarespace website. Now, if I change the shape of this button to have those 90 degree corners, check it out. My product block changed, my form block changed, all of the buttons in my list section have changed, and even the button up here in the header of my website has changed. The primary button style on your Squarespace website is used by other buttons. So make sure the design choices you make for your primary button will reflect your style across all pages and all content on your site. Because again, it's used by different product blocks, it's even used in the header of the website. Now here inside the button menu is where you can change the font style. Maybe you want a different font family. Maybe you want them all to be italic or you want to change the size of the text or even the spacing. You've got a lot of options here. Now underneath that, we have shape, which is where we selected those 90 degree corners. You can also choose rounded, the pill shape, which you'll see here on the screen for my secondary button. We can also choose the completely rounded oval here, the underline, which you'll see on the screen for the tertiary button, or this leaf shape, which I'll click on so we can see that. 
You can also select custom corners and customize this however you see fit. I'll go back to those 90 degree corners we had and let's take a look at the no fill options as well. This creates an outline. Now instantly we'll see the actual background color disappeared but we're still not seeing an outline. Even though I selected no fill, we need to go back here into our button menu and actually increase the size of the border for that outline so we can actually see it. So if you're looking at the design options and you select no fill and everything disappears, make sure you've actually enabled the outline. Now, after that, you're going to see the options for padding. This is very important for the buttons that are set to fit. Buttons set to fill disregard the padding because they're going to fill the entire space of that content block. So take a look at these buttons that I'll highlight on the screen here. Watch what happens when I select small and watch what happens when I select large. And now what happens when I go back to medium? Those are affected. Did you notice that the button set to fill was not affected at all? We'll do that one more time. Small medium, large. All right, let's go back to medium and you'll see here at the very top of the screen underneath the word buttons, we can switch over to our secondary button styles and our tertiary and you'll see all of the exact same options we had before. Changing the font style, changing the shape of the button, changing the thickness of the outline and the padding, super duper customizable. And I want to encourage you to get really creative here. Just remember that whatever you assign for your primary button style will be used by other parts of your Squarespace website. Now, when it comes to the colors of your buttons, that's going to be something that's unique based on your color theme. Navigating back to our main site styles menu here, we have the colors option right above buttons. If I click on this arrow here, we'll instantly see that Squarespace is indicating which color theme is being used on this page. Let's take a look at this light one color theme as an example. If I click on light one here in the list of color themes, we're going to see a list of all different types of content available in my Squarespace website that we can change the color of. All we're trying to change the color of are the buttons right here inside this list section. So check this out. I'm just gonna click on this list section and did you see how that massive list of items in my Squarespace website got narrowed down to what I clicked on? How cool is that? All right, here we can change the button background. Even though we've selected the outline option for that button, this background is what's showing up when we hover over it. And that also controls the border color. So if I click on this circle, I can make it yellow. I can make it blue. I can click custom and choose a vibrant purple if I want to. You can customize that to any color you want, again, using the color theme. So one last time, how we got there from our main site styles menu, click into the colors option, make sure you select the correct color theme for what you're looking at. And then if you wanna narrow down this list of all of the possible things, just click on that page section and Squarespace will narrow down that list for you so you can adjust your button color. Now that's it for your overview of what we can do with the design menu, but my friend, we have so much to do with custom code. So let's go ahead and select save and exit and I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite tricks for customizing buttons in your Squarespace website using CSS. On the left-hand side of the screen, I want you to click on Pages. Then I want you to scroll down to Website Tools and then select Custom CSS. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the header button is designed to match the primary button style, but we can use custom code to make it look different. Now, I have a custom code collection known as my Squarespace CSS Cheat Sheet that has a list of all of the codes I use to modify Squarespace websites. I'm going to scroll through here to grab the code for the header button. Here we go. And we'll add that to our custom CSS. I will include this code in the description below. And for those of you that are brand new to code, just stick with me here. It's not nearly as complicated as you might think, okay? We've added the selector here, and now I'm gonna open up a curly bracket, and let's start by changing the background color. How about we say background color orange, and then exclamation point important so the browser pays attention to our code. There we go. We now have an orange background to that button, so it's already looking different than the primary button on our website. Let's go ahead and change the shape of it as well. I'm gonna add a semicolon, and I'm gonna say border radius. How about 30 px? Now we have rounded corners to that button. You know what, that's not really enough for me. How about we change that to 80 px? There we go. Now we have a button shape that's similar to the secondary button shape, but it has a unique background color. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that border as well while we're here. Let's just say border none, exclamation point important. The border will go away and we have a completely unique button in the top right hand corner of our Squarespace website. It no longer matches our primary button, but that's the only thing we changed with code. Now, hover effects are one of my favorite things to create code for, so I'm going to share that with you right now. 
I'm going to copy the selector here. I'll add a new line of code that's going to say header, SQS button element primary, and now I'm going to add the colon symbol in the word hover. This means the code I'm about to add right here will only happen when I hover over that button with my cursor. Right now, all we're getting is the text color change, which was built in to be a part of the primary button. So let's go ahead and make some other changes so it's even more unique. Now, one of the first things I want to change is the color of the font, because again, it's updating to match what we have here for the primary button. But that white on an orange doesn't really stand out very much. That doesn't seem to be very readable or accessible. So let's start by saying color, and we'll change it back to a solid black on a hover. There we go. So this hover effect is actually resetting that, so we're not going to see a color change. Now, to make this more dynamic, how about we change the shape? I'm going to say border radius, and we'll say 0px, important. Spelled correctly, there we go. And now when we hover over the button, it's going to stretch back out to those corners at 90 degrees there, changing the shape of that button on a hover. Pretty cool trick, right? How about we go ahead and give it a shadow as well? I'm going to say box shadow, 5px, 5px, 15, and stick with me here. I'm just giving it a light gray shadow. And now we can see the button almost lifts off the page when we hover over it. A pretty awesome technique. One last thing I want to share with you about these hover effects is how to make sure that they're not so instant. That's not a very smooth transition right there. So I'm going to add one more semicolon, and I'm going to say transition all 1s. And now exclamation point important. Now watch what happens when I hover my cursor over that button. It takes a full second for it to transform. Pretty cool, right? What we're seeing when we move the cursor, it's going to snap back to the style it was before. So I'm going to take that transition line, and I'm going to add it here after line four at the very top of my code, just to make sure that we get that smooth transition both ways. Now we'll see it change slowly on a hover, and it'll slowly go away when we move our cursor. Definitely a fun hover effect specifically for the header button on our website. No other button on our Squarespace website has been affected. Now, let's say we actually want that to happen for every primary button. We want them all to have that orange background, that border radius, no border itself, and a smooth transition to stretch out to those 90-degree corners. I'm just going to remove the word header from my code. And now we'll see the primary button's been updated, but I realize we didn't add important after the border radius. Let's fix that real quick. Now we're going to say important. There we go. And when we hover over those buttons, we're going to get the same effect for every primary button on our website. But again, I wanted to show you in custom code how we can customize a button separate from the primary button. So I'm going to go ahead and put the word header back here in the beginning of my code. So this is only happening for the header call to action button on my Squarespace website. Now, this is just the start of all the amazing things you can do with code, and I'll include some resources in the links below to teach you more. But let's go ahead and do a quick recap before I call this video a wrap. The main thing we talked about in this video today was that we have primary, secondary, and tertiary button blocks. But this primary button block style, that's going to be used by other parts of your Squarespace website. So make sure that your primary button style has a design that works well with everything else. If you hop into edit mode and you've added a button to your site, you can choose the different design options here by clicking on this tab right here. Here you can change the button style, and you can also have it set to fit or fill. If it's set to fill, it's going to stretch to fill the entire container. So you can make that button really big if you want to, and it'll still retain as much of the style as possible. Now, if you have it set to fit inside this design setting, you'll get some alignment options to change where it's located inside that content block area. To customize the style of your primary, secondary, and tertiary buttons, click the paintbrush icon to hop into your site styles menu. Here you'll see the buttons option. You can hop into all button packs to choose some different design settings that are created by Squarespace designers, or you can click into primary, secondary, or tertiary options and customize these yourself. Here you can change the style of the font, changing the font family, style, weight, size of the font, letter spacing, and text transform. After that, you have the shape option where you can select one of these presets or create your own custom corners, whatever you see fit. You can also choose no fill, which will create an outline for your button. Now, if you choose no fill and you don't see an outline, make sure you actually have a value here on the outline slider. After that, we have padding, which only applies to the buttons that are set to fit. Notice what happens when I select small, medium, or large. Only the button set to fit changes because the border for the button set to fill is going to match the size of the content container. Now again, we have primary, 
secondary and tertiary available here inside your site styles menu. And we can change font, shape, outline, and padding. But if you want to change the color, you need to hop into the color menu here inside Squarespace. Make sure that you identify the color theme you're about to work with. You'll see these pop up on the screen here. Let's say we want to change the button color for the lightest one section. We'll click into lightest one and we'll see a ton of options here. So what I'm going to do is click on my section and Squarespace will narrow that list down. So the only options I see are what's right here on the screen. Here we change the button background for our list section to a different color. If I click on this option, I can choose any custom color I want from the color picker, or I can grab one from my color palette. If you want to change the style of one of these buttons for something unique, like the form block, the product block, or a list section, which all respond to the primary button style, what you'll want to do is use custom CSS. We'll go ahead and save our changes and select exit, and over here on the left-hand side of the screen, I'll show you how we got to this menu. From the start, click on Pages underneath the word Website. Then I want you to select Website Tools under your Utilities. Then select Custom CSS. Here's where you can add the custom code. And again, I'll include this in the description below. This code that we use today was for the header button in our Squarespace website. What we did with custom code was we changed the background color so it was different than the primary button style. We changed the border radius, giving it a different shape. We removed the solid border that it had. And this transition line makes sure that our hover effect takes a second to appear and disappear. Now we did add a custom hover effect where we changed the color of the font, we reset the border radius which changed the shape, we added a box shadow, and again we added that transition to make sure that it was an instant, it was a nice and smooth transition. All of this custom code is in the description below. All right, we just covered so much in this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments and definitely check out the resources that I've added in the description below because I've got a lot of helpful information that you can use to make Squarespace uniquely yours. Thank you so much for watching this video and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at insidethesquare.co. That's insidethesquare.co.